Hello super user, so today is a really exciting day because I'm going to show you a more behind the scenes look into the Jetstream Finale controller. Now for those of you who don't know what it is, this is a device that will really supercharge your Finale workflow and I have it set up right now so that way it just works on my phone and I'm going to show you exactly some of the things we can do with it. So I have pre-set up this document which as you can see right now is incredibly messy and there's a lot going on. So let's real quickly fix this up. So we're gonna start off with some of the bar lines. So we're just gonna make that a single bar line. And we're also gonna make that a single bar line. And then we want a double bar line at the end. So we're just gonna have a final bar line like that. Now I'm gonna go over into the special tools and I am going to go uh, clear out a lot of default things in here. So now I've already headed to the clear section and now we're gonna clear our articulations just like that. We're going to move all the note heads to default note heads, just like that. We're going to get rid of all the dynamics, like that. We're gonna get rid of all the hairpins, like that. All the glissandos, that way, as well as the slurs. And finally, we're gonna get rid of all these chords that don't have anything to do with the music. And there you have it. Cleaned up, nice, pristine document. So let's say we wanted to add some dynamics. So here's something we can do, we could just select this entire thing, and let's say we want a nice crescendo throughout the entire phrase, so we can just add in a crescendo like that. And what if we just want to start nice and quiet and add a piano? We can add a piano like that, and notice how everything aligns, and there's a little space here, that way there's no collision, as would normally be the default. Normally you'd have to go through by hand and do this. But maybe that you decided you don't really want to have a piano dynamic there, you really wanted to have, I don't know, it be a mezzo piano, so you can just increase it like that, or increase it again and maybe that alignment's not right, so you can just move it up and down really nice and easily. So now we have that, and let's say we want to add some accents into here. So I can go over here to accents and just add an accent on everything automatically. And perhaps I want a fermata on this last note, so I'll just add a fermata right there, nice and simple. No need to go over here to articulations tool or memorize keyboard shortcuts or move your mouse at all. All I have to do is highlight something and then click a button on this profile. So let me show you an idea of what I'm actually doing over here. Now this is called a Stream Deck. Now a Stream Deck is normally a device that we can use. It looks like this. It's a physical hardware thing with flexible buttons that allows us to program whatever we want on the back side. And we can make these buttons do whatever we want or any action we want. Now this originally came out of gaming and video editing, but a group of colleagues of mine decided to start making this that way we can be hyperactive in finale specifically that way we can use really cool apple scripts if you're on a mac or auto it scripts if you're on a windows computer and we can really take full function of jw lua and make it really simple so that way you don't have to remember any of your own keyboard shortcuts or even do any complicated keyboard maestro or similar hacks that you would normally have to do to achieve similar functionality it's all there for you by default, and as you saw, everything works in a split of a second. So I'm gonna continue talking a little bit more about it, but if you're already convinced, just go over here to jetstreamfinale.com and scroll down to the bottom of the page, insert your name and email, and we will add you to the waiting list. There's still a couple bugs we're fixing, but as soon as we fix it, we will send it straight out to you that we can get started right away. So far, with only a little bit of word of mouth, we've already gotten 30 people to sign up, and the number keeps growing every single day. So this is a really exciting thing. Many people are on board working on it to make it an amazing device for you to use. And all you need is a phone, and if you want more tactile keys, you could always go to Stream Deck and then buy an actual Stream Deck, but that's not necessary. You could just get started with your phone in only a couple minutes. And if you want to get the beta version right now, just click this link and we will get you all set up and that way you can help us and debug a lot more of these little fixes. But to continue, there's also some more content that we're creating on a YouTube channel, Jetstream Finale Controller. Do definitely check it out. These videos are made by Jake and honestly, they're a lot better produced than my videos will be on Jetstream because I don't know how to do this setup. And so anyways, with that out of the way, I'm gonna dive in real quickly and actually show you a lot of what the Jetstream Finale controller looks like. Okay, so when I have my phone pulled up with the Finale controller, and by the way, this all works on Wi-Fi. So once I have my phone pulled up, this is what I see. It's a really nice, simple page. You can have things, go over here to note input, and you can see a bunch of note input tools, and we're gonna add more here later. 
And then over here we have entry. And this is where I, I was talking about like adding articulations or even more tools of you could just delete, reset, or copy and paste articulations or even split them apart. And finally here, I'll show you that functionality right now. So let's say I go over here and have a combined articulation like a staccato tenuto, go over here, click that thing, and it divides it up to a normal staccato and a normal tenuto. That way I can move them independently. Now this works really well if you have a note like in here. That way you can actually have the staccato still in the staff line, or normally if you didn't do that, it would have a weird collision like that. So there's that. Then we go over here, back up, we have dynamics. This is where I was doing, where I was talking about adding start dynamics. You can actually add dynamics to the ends of a region. Uh, nice little niente right there, so that way you don't even have to watch my video on niente. Come over here, you can add crescendo, decrescendo over in this tool. You can add a lot more content, like you can increase all the dynamics, decrease all the dynamics, move the selection that you're already working on. That way you don't even have to touch your mouse to create a new selection. You can align the dynamics, uh, clear them, etc., etc., etc. There's a lot more cool stuff going on here. You can change your clef out of whim. Let me show you this. So let's say part way through, like right here, I just want to add a bass clef for a measure. There it is, bass clef or rhythm clef, or maybe I want like an alto clef. You get the idea. Uh, I'm going to move it back to treble clef. Coming back up here, we have smart lines. This is where you can add any of those smart lines without having to go over here to the smart line tool or even memorize a bunch of keyboard shortcuts like you don't have to do the normal trill like that and have and hope it shows up correctly and with no collisions. Instead, you can just highlight it, click the trill button, and it adds the trill for you. Coming back over here, they also have staff styles. So you can just add staff styles real quickly. Normally, these are a huge pain to do because you have to go over here, go to the staff tool, come up here, apply staff style with the current score and parts, and then go through all the window options right there. Instead, you could just do it straight away through here. You can do a bunch of cool stuff with chords. We're still working on making this amazingly awesome. You can add expression text that you'd normally want to add or technique text. And these, I believe, all of them that have playback in finale also automatically play back in finale. You can add lyrics and do all these cool things with lyrics. Typography, if you want to add any of these special characters, you can do that without having to memorize any Unicode or any copy paste or anything else you normally have to do. It's all right here for you. Oh, one more thing. I forgot to mention, you can have special types of mallets. So you can have pictograms just with the Jetstream Finale controller. So that's all in the entry thing. Then we have the edit function. Over here we can lock systems or break lock systems, add multi rests or break them. Like I could just do it like that, add it or break it, nice and simple, instead of going up here to edit, multi rests create, it's just literally the press of a button. You have the normal clear thing. So let's say you wanted to bulk clear items like I was doing at the beginning. I had them all on one page. You'll notice that they're also elsewhere where they normally apply. So you can clear articulations from the articulations area earlier, or you could do it right here. Same thing with dynamics or glissandos and other smart shapes or crescendos, decrescendos, trills, and the list goes on and on and on. Coming back up here, these are for copying things. So I can automatically copy and paste different aspects of the music without having to go all the way up here to edit, edit filter, and then select through all these buttons. Instead, if I wanted to move the trill over here, so I literally just go over here to copy, and I could just paste it right over there without copying and pasting anything else. And then, best of all, there's the staff plus stack option, which allows you to reset everything. That way you still don't have to go up here to an uncheck edit filter or memorize any keyboard shortcuts. And then finally, you can also reset items to their defaults. Now this page is really helpful if you're working with someone else's music and want to conform it to your own house styles. You can reset everything from this page. Now if we come back up here, uh, there's even more stuff we can do, like we can change no heads. So I can change no heads really easily. Make X no heads right there like I had at the beginning. Or I can ghost note heads, or I can even do partial measure selecting and change just the one note to a square note head. No need for JW change, no need to write your own JW Lewis script, and no need to go over here to the special tools, select a measure, select a note head, and then go fuss through all of here finding just the perfect note head only to realize it's in a different font. You can do it all from right here. 
And then, of course, I can always go back over here, go to clear, and there's this note head option. I just click that, and I clear out all the note heads I just created. So now we're coming back up here to beam. So we can do a bunch of cool beaming. So we can rebeam the music, rebeam it to time signatures, rebeam it to lyrics. And this is especially useful if you have vocal parts. You can automatically apply Patterson beams, etc. I'm not going to go through all the options. Layers, there's some really cool swapping of the layers or clearing layers out in this tool. You can use JW Fit Measure if you have it installed with that button. There's a bunch of note tools here, so you can automatically resize notes. So, like, I can go over here and resize the notes to be smaller, like Q, so I can create cues manually like that. Or maybe I want them larger, or maybe I want them to be a certain percentage, like, I don't know, 40% just like that, resets it, or if you have multiple note heads, and like you wanted to have some optional notes, like this, where the top note is the main note and you wanted the rest to be optional, you can go like this and automatically resize the note heads that way or however you normally want to do it. And of course you can change the spelling of notes, there's just so more that I'm even glossing over. You have a bunch of Finale plugins you can access from your fingertips right over here as well as a lot of default Finale plugins and other core things built into Finale all at your default, like default rests or real rests, cautionary accidentals, adding cue notes, all from your fingertips. Coming back up here to page, we have, we have not even gotten past the third entry here. So page, you can redefine the pages. Oh, this is so cool. Special tools, you have tools, let's say you're on a like a MacBook where there's no numpad, here you go, here's finally your numpad to automatically change note durations or do whatever you want. It's so cool, there's even more stuff here that I'm just skipping over because I want to get to the really cool parts. You can automatically change the fit of the page, so I can fit the, the page width or I can make it so that the entire page is already on there. I can change it between page view and scroll view or concert pitch and not concert pitch just from all these things. Or I can go from 100% zoom to 200% zoom, no keyboard shortcuts, or make it larger or smaller, I don't care. Just do it all from right in this menu. Soon, we're gonna have playback controls as well, which means you won't have to use this at all. You just do everything straight from your fingertips. It's like having every single possible keyboard shortcut in one hand with no memorization. And it's all visually and pictographically set up so that you know exactly what you're doing before you do it. Over here we have some really cool websites and resources for you to check out. As well as a button over here for you to check for the most recent update. Automatically when you sign up to get the Finale controller over here, we will send you emails each time there's a new update. But maybe you decide in the future you want to opt out in emails, or maybe you just want to check to make sure you might have missed an email. From this button, you can just check for any updates that you might have missed. Coming back up here, then on the bottom page, these are some really cool default things you can access that you can automatically change from going from the part to the score. So like if I actually had parts in here, like there, I can go back and forth between the part and the score, or if there is multiple pages, like, um, let's see how am I going to add more pages. Add measures, 1,000 measures. So there's multiple pages now. I can go to the next page nice and easily straight from the Finale controller rather than scrolling because it's already there. All the main navigation's on the main menu, so you don't have to even worry about it. So again, if you want this, go to jetstreamfinale.com, sign up, and we will send you an email as soon as it comes out. And just a quick recap, you have no inputs, you have all this no input stuff. You have the entry tools with articulations, where you can add articulations, dynamics with crescendos, crescendos that even automatically avoid collisions with the parts and automatically vertically align to be aligned with everything else. You have clefts, so you can change the clefts. You have smart lines, so you can add trills, slurs, and everything else you need. You have staff styles, so you don't have to use the staff tool. You can add chords from here, you can add expression text, technique text, lyrics. Going back up here to the edit page where you can copy and paste everything or clear everything or return everything to its defaults, change the note heads, lock systems, create multi-measure rests, work with the beams, fit measures, all the Finale plugins you need, all the tools. You have all triplet options. I didn't even go over triplet options, but you can create those. 
You can use a bunch of cool pitch tools that I never even talked about, or even these note tools like resizing notes. Over here you have the page tool, so anything you need to do with pages, like redefine pages, edit page formats, or write all there. You have miscellaneous tools including a numpad. Over here you have the score and system tools where you have the bar line, the form, the key signature. I didn't even talk about form where you can add measures, insert measures, use repeats, first endings, second endings, codas, all right there. You can have view tools which allows you to change how you're viewing finale as well as playbacks so that we don't have to deal with the painful finale playback controller over here and so much more. So if you want this, do again. Sign up for your email. Make sure to check out the Jetstream Finale Controller YouTube page so that we can see really professional, polished videos about every single new feature and updates. And if you really want a tactile feel for this, get the Stream Deck. And I know this is sounding a lot like a sales pitch, but it is completely free. We are not going to make any money off of this whatsoever. We just want to make this amazing resource for you. And I've been personally using this for the last several months, and I can tell you from my experience, it really helps. And if you even want even more, there is the Jetstream XL version. It doesn't have any new features, and it requires you to specifically buy the XL size of the Stream Deck hardware. But instead of going through all these pages, you have even more options on one page that you can use. Exact same feature set, just more options on a single page. So again, last thing to wrap this up, if you want to get it, just go to JustinFinale.com, insert your name and email, and that way we can get started. And if you want to help beta test the server us and get the most recent version today, just click these links to send us a message, and we will add you to the Slack group.